let's get into a little bit of like how tornadoes work. Are you, are you cool with that? Yeah. Tell me how tornadoes work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's different kinds of tornadoes that follow different kinds of storms or are, you know, you know, associated with different kinds of storms. And so different, as you know, thunderstorms can be very chaotic. You know, think, you know, like think of just a river and, and if you're along the side of the river where you have all the rocks and things, you get all sorts of just chaotic eddies and, and streams. I mean, it's that times is just a million inside a thunderstorm. And however, there's a certain breed of thunderstorms that we like to say organizes into one cell. And by one cell, we mean one updraft and one downdraft. Um, so sometimes you have cells that are multicellular and that's the most typical kind. And they're, they're they, they kind of just interfere with each other and can kind of create chaos, mm -hmm. but the atmosphere organizes into this one updraft and, and it, the orientation of it will rotate. So, and it will also, let me back up and think of like one of the most common kinds of thunderstorms, which is called a pulse storm. And it's basically just heat rising uh -huh. and then that, it goes sorry, up. Is, that, is that the updraft you're talking about the heat rising yeah that's okay. updraft would be so let's think of a thunderstorm as just an updraft which is air moving up mm -hmm. and a downdraft which is air moving down when it's an updraft it, it looks like clouds billowing clouds when it's a downdraft it looks like rain okay so as you're approaching a storm you can if you see the billowy clouds and you can see them kind of rising that's an updraft and then it comes down in the form of rain. What goes up must must come down. And that's so because that as that heat rises, the air cools and condenses, and the water forms and comes back down. Yeah, and then more physics that expands. It releases yeah. heat into yeah, the yeah. atmosphere and all that stuff. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible for now. Yeah, it does get um, pretty complex. Yeah, it really does. And uh, so so I think the best way to start out is just do a little little kind of define like a thunderstorm. So you have this rising air. And, uh, and it'll, it'll go up. And once it gets so high, it comes back down, you know, gravity brings it back down. Well, these supercells are kind of like that. So they go up, however, upper level winds are that are stronger as the winds get faster and faster and faster with altitude, it'll actually tilt the updraft. And so when it tilts the updraft, the, uh, it can ventilate. So in other words, the downdraft doesn't just collapse on the updraft and kill mm -hmm. the whole thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. So backing up, most of those pole storms only last 30 or 40 minutes. That's the life expect expectancy of them sometimes, sometimes a little longer. But these supercells, because they're tilted and the rain falls outside the downdraft or the updraft, they can replicate and exist for hours and hours and hours as we just saw on December 10th, when we had what we were calling the quad state storm. Yeah. Yeah. So it was one supercell, which, which supercells is the name of these rotating long lived storms. And this breed of storms is responsible for the majority of the world's strong tornadoes. And this breed of storm called a supercell happens in the United States like no other place in the world. That's actually what my video is about is, is why more tornadoes happen in the United States than anywhere else. So that's, you're, you're right on topic for me. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Ultimately it's our unique geography yeah. that sets the stage for these supercells that assemble all the ingredients for tornadoes to occur and they happen more often. So that increases the chance is that a tornado will, will occur and they, they, last longer so that increases the chances that a, a tornado yeah. will occur okay so, so with so, that i think yeah. that's with that so let's just say we can go deeper and deeper and deeper but just think of a powerful thunderstorm and it's just think of the updraft as just this powerful vacuum just just sucking up everything from the winds you know close to the ground mm -hmm. and event it starts to rotate it starts to spin these storms tend to take all this vorticity Mm -hmm. all this spinning, all these chaotic eddies, and it, it takes them all. And it, it seems like it learns how to, to assemble them and aggregate them. And if the vorticity is all um, cyclonic or spinning the same direction as the earth, that all kind of uh, like it adds up and grows and grows. It does, and, and it doesn't cancel each other out. It just gets stronger and stronger and stronger until eventually you have a tornado. So, 
in just some quick researching that I was doing for this video, obviously I'm, it's still early right now, but um, it, it seems like there were two different explanations and, that I ran across. And, and one of them was more just like you have a storm and it turns on like a horizontal axis, axis you know, uh, in, in space like that. And then mm -hmm. another almost made it sound like it's, it's a, almost like the vortex starts sideways. Yeah. Almost at the back of the cloud, it's like, it's like a little steamboat thing in the back, paddle boat <laughs> and then, and right. then as, that, as that gains momentum it turns and like hits the ground and becomes vertical right so most of the vorticity that we're talking about is going to be horizontal rolls so okay. imagine okay. imagine imagine that you've got clay and, you, and you're doing this mm -hmm. and you're in your hands and it turns into like long noodles that's what the atmosphere is doing except for it's not going back and forth so if you've got you know if you've got wind at 20 knots at this level of the sandwich and then then right above it at 30 knots it's going faster. Well, the air in between gets rolled into these little vortices. And so that's where it starts off is it starts off horizontal. And then the supercells are able to tilt that horizontal into the vertical. And, and, and the, that's how the, and, and, and co-locate it with the updraft so that it just kind of amplifies and, and sucks it right up. And it'll, and then there's, there's, I can keep going into stretching <laughs> and stuff like that. There's, there, there's the um, angular momentum, the conservation of angular momentum, which sounds like a big word, but it's a really simple idea. Yeah. And, and that's, it's, what's the equation? Um, oh gosh, put on the spot. This is so much easier if you're going to do a tornado video to write it down and read it <laughs> because you'll mess it up when you're, at least I yeah. do. Some of the doctors I hang out with can answer. They're prepared. They've got their simple sentences all backlogged on stock, you mm -hmm. know? And so, uh, but uh, you have basically the, the diameter is related to the mass and is related to the speed. So all three of these things are related. And so if you change one, the other changes and the, the classic uh, example that we use is the ice skater when her hands are out her her radius her diameter is wider okay so she spins slowly but her mass is exactly the same mm -hmm. but when she brings her arms in her radius gets smaller and so the the, the velocity of the vorticity goes up and so those are you could stretch it out, you can shrink it, you know, and just go back and forth forever. But the conservation of the angular momentum stays the same. Does that make any sense at all? It does. And in fact, I'm sitting here thinking like, is it, is it the fact that you have this like cyclonic action and as it speeds up, it sort of tightens and that accelerates the speeding up and it, and it yeah. becomes this like tube of right. cyclonic wind. So you've got rotating winds at the surface underneath these supercells, but they might only be 10, 20 knots. It's not strong enough to start lofting debris mm -hmm. or dust and stuff like that. So as it gets tighter and tighter and tighter, it gets faster and faster and faster until all of a sudden the tornado becomes visible. You can have a tornado by definition on the ground that you can't even see. So it could be like a really uh, moist area, like covered with rain. So it's not lofting debris. And, uh, and if you're really close, you can, you can see just right at the surface, these really, you know, buzzing vortices, but you, it, there's no condensation between that and the cloud. Yeah. So it's by def, torn, I mean, air, a tornado is, is a violent column of air and air is usually visible. So you need condensation and you need uh, debris so that you can see the tornado. Yeah. The, the, the older I've gotten and the more I kind of look into all this kind of stuff, it, it strikes me how much. Uh, the atmosphere is more almost it's it's fluid right it, it's like an ocean above the ground right it's just a less dense fluid yeah yeah that that shifted my thinking in a, in a lot of ways like you were talking about the river earlier with the eddies and stuff like that like that's kind of what we're experiencing up here that helped me out with uh, understanding flight a lot more that i started imagining an airplane taking off not as something lifting off the ground and into nothing, but as something kind of like gliding through water. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know, it framed it in a, a different way that made more sense to me. Yeah. And, and if you've, if you've ever flown an airplane, like when you turn, it turns like a boat. So when you, you know, when you turn, uh, it goes straight for a while and then mm. starts to, you know, mm -hmm. of course, uh, depending on how much, maybe, maybe the boats turn faster because of you know, your fins and your friction in the water, whereas a plane might have less. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, the uh, the con con hello. I almost said the conversation of angular momentum. It's when the angular momentum is having a talk with itself. Sorry. Anyway, conservation of angular momentum. Conservation, right? Conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's great about these 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 podcasts and these live talks is is you might have said that and not even known it, then you go back later and you're like, oh, did I really just say that? Yeah. Did I really say that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, the irony is that this this podcast is conversations with Joe is what I call it. So maybe I should call it um, conservations with Joe. Um, there you go. I'm gonna stop now. Um, that's the same thing that causes uh, solar systems to be on a flat plane. That's the same reason that galaxies are in a flat plane is is because of the the angular momentum and everything kind of like sh 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 shrinks down to like a almost a 2d plane probably i haven't so, even thought of that yeah i'm sure i mean that's what's so great about these laws of physics is they're universal yeah Literally. yeah probably isn't that wild to think about yes the same the same forces that are causing well all the planets except for venus and uranus uh are rotating in the same direction is is i like to say uranus <laughs> i know there's no good way to say it because uranus sounds like urine I prefer that's what that i think one. of <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just an yeah. ugly word no matter how you it's do an it. ugly word yeah and i'm just too immature to to let it go i know i, guess. <laughs> I, I am too and every single time i mention it it's like yeah uh, there's they, they found a ring around uranus you know yeah it's i'm sorry i can't i can't let yeah, that yeah. go I'm, I'm too immature yeah the, you, uh, what is it you can't you can you can take the boy out of the eh, never mind i screwed up we're all 13 on the inside is what i guess yes we are yeah. yeah i i still am on the outside so anyway back to angular <laughs> momentum <laughs> <laughs> what angular momentum oh sorry uh, oh yeah here we go we can edit all this out <laughs> If I edited out all of my bad jokes, there would be nothing left. It was no other, podcast. Yeah. It would be other people talking. Well, I wanted to ask you this. Um, one of the things that fascinated me when I was a kid, I, of course, I loved, you know, mysteries of the unexplained and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I loved all those stories. For example, um, it's still there. I have not, sorry, I'm skipping around a bit. Um, there's a Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum here in Dallas that I went to when I was a kid and it's still there. And I kind of want to go back just to see what's, what's there still. But um, I remember in those Ripley's Believe It or Not books, and I want to say it was even at that museum that I went to, crazy tornado stories of like, somebody put out something in their mailbox and the tornado swept it away and delivered it right to the house of the person that they were meaning to mail it to, or things like, uh, it would drive straws of hay through telephone poles and stuff. Um, those are massive exaggerations, I'm sure. But as somebody who covers a lot of tornadoes and has been there on the ground and seen the results of, uh, you know, the devastation and everything, like, do you have any just things that stand out? It's just like, I cannot believe that happened. First off, when you have winds that are estimated over, you know, up to 200 miles per hour and over, crazy things can happen. You know, yeah. and, and, and a grain of straw can have a lot of momentum. Yeah. Granted, there might have already been a crack in the telephone pole that it just kind of, you know, like a whole hay bale got blasted into it. And mm -hmm. that one straw, who knows what what happens? Um, we always as people who are excited and we like to amplify it and exaggerate it to its most extreme possible scenario. Uh, of course. But um, I'm really bad at filming damage and I need to get over this. I think this is something that I wrestle with because I feel so invasive on these poor people. Of course. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's an interesting point. Yeah. But I mean, all my friends do it and the people don't seem to mind. And, and, um, uh, but I, I regret so often not bringing the camera and, mm -hmm. and, and usually you've got your hands full in that scenario where you're actually holding on to somebody, um, trying to help them trying to help them. And so I've got no photo damage. Maybe the, the right way to go is to, is I've got a drone just to, to go in there, but even that, I feel like I'm, I'm going to try to sneak in there and get it when they're not looking. And, you know, maybe I should just go ask them and say, Hey, you know, uh, this is what I do. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I'm, so I have not, I've got some stories of just crazy stuff where the, the weird thing that I've always seen is I've seen um, subdivisions get wiped out where every other house is, is destroyed, but just out of coincidence, nobody was home in this house. And then the people that were home in this house that was cut in half are crawling out. So then you go next door that's completely leveled and you're thinking, Oh God, what am I going to see? I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this, yeah, but you've yeah. got to help, yeah, yeah, you know? And, uh, and, and then there's nobody there. There's no blood. You're thinking, I don't know if I'm ready to see this. I can remember one, one, this was my first EF5 in 2011 and the house was leveled. I'm deaf in one ear. I'm completely deaf in one ear. So I can't place sounds. And I was walking on this rubble and I hear this child underneath it, you know, and I'm talking to the, you know, whining and I'm like, mm. you're going to be okay. I'm here. And I'm just, I'm trying to pull it up and my, you know, I'm grabbing nails and, and, and then this cat walks by. It was just a little kitten meowing, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I don't know why I threw that in, but that's a real thing that I'm just, that's what's going through my mind now is when there's damage, I'm thinking for some reason, I think there could be a child. Like, I don't care about, about adults <laughs> just, for some reason, I think <laughs> there could be a child in there and I have to stop. 